This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Russell Reed Show. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Kicking it off on this Thursday evening here in Cleveland, Ohio. I am Russell Reed. Joining me is Alex Russo, actress, model, producer, director, all rolled into one. We'll get into your career here in just a little bit. How's your drive over? Oh, my drive was excellent. The traffic actually wasn't too bad in Cleveland today. Yeah, it, it's uh, for those who are not really uh, Clevelanders, we've, we have two movies being shot here. We've had 16 consecutive days of rain, and uh, the, the flower of choice in Cleveland is the orange barrels. They, they start popping up in spring and don't go down until the wintertime, and just getting around is just a nightmare. Uh Get some business out of the way. If you have any questions, comments, want to participate in the show, uh, there are several ways you can do it. You could contact me on Facebook at The Russell Reed Show, on my personal page, The Russell Reed Show, or call us in at 888-668-0742. Um, so, like I was saying, there are a bunch of movies going on and, and 16 straight days of rain. Uh, there was reports that downtown at uh, where the rapids come in and out a wall fell it gave oh, no. gave way and it was you know bad news there and a, they said another wall fell down at this at city hall now i mean these are all reports on the no it was actually uh the roof of the uh city hall flew off that's what it was the, the roof yeah the roof of city hall blew off yes Wow, <laughs> that, that's that's oh, a whole man. lot different. And yeah. I and you know there were tornado warnings out and sixteen straight right. days, and it was just one of those one of those ugly ugly messes. It, it you know I wasn't really affected too much where I where I'm from. Had a little bit of hail, no wind, very little rain. But we we must have just been in that right area because I guess a lot of places just got hammered. Mm-hmm. And um, a little bit about the show for everybody, for first-time viewers. Uh, I go over a lot of different news stories. Then the second half of the show, uh, we bring in our, our guests, and I, I, I'm going to get Alex's opinions on a few news stories. These are not exactly the the most normal news stories. Some are, you know... A little odd. Uh, some of them are pretty you know, straightforward. Uh, like one of the newer ones is uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're the uh, federal housing authorities that help you know lower income families get loans. They are being sued mm-hmm. by a hedge fund company, uh, Perry Capital LLC. I guess they were given a bailout at one point in time. And the money did not go to help the people. It went to support the people in the in the business offices. You know, it wasn't the money was not set aside the proper proper way. But yet, you know, everybody's getting these you know financial bailouts, and they're not using the money appropriately. But none of them seem to be coming to court. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's one of those. You know, you can scream, holler, and shout all you want, but if it falls on deaf ears, you know, there are all kinds of, you know, issues financially and other things, you know, and everyone keeps saying the market's improving. Houses are selling. I know a realtor that's selling something every every week, but I don't know what, you know, I'm, I, I'm trying to get around because if, if they keep saying the market's improving, how are all these houses flying off? Yet I see signs for houses for eleven thousand mm-hmm. dollars, you know, or thirty thousand dollars. You know, it's just you know a weird situation going on. And okay, the 
other news story. Ah, oh, come on. A beauty queen has a deal with an ugly reality. The pageant contestant is Sheena Monin. Uh, she was ordered by a judge to pay the Donald. Mr. Trump, the owner of uh, the Miss USA pageant, five million, million with an M, dollars uh, for a defamation lawsuit. She claimed the contest was fixed. Oh, man. And uh, you know, some of the story goes, uh, after the 2012 Miss USA pageant, the former Miss Pennsylvania accused the contest of being rigged. She claimed on Facebook and on the Today Show that another contestant saw a written list of five finalists backstage before the winners were officially announced on stage, according to the New York Law Journal. Moen quit the contest on her Facebook page that the contest was fraudulent, lacking in morals, inconsistent, in many ways, trashy. Uh, Well, the Donald fired back, calling her accusations false and reckless. The New York Post reported she was angry that she lost. He added... uh, Trump sued over the false charges, and the case went to an arbitrator, ruled that Moran had defamed the pageant, and ordered her to pay $5 million. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, it's Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And he could defame anything just Mm. on his own. Now, because you've done modeling, are pageants or contests that you know of, in your opinion fixed um the pageants that i have dealt with in my lifetime um have not been fixed they have been completely 100 percent fair um but mainly because one of them I, I actually direct and i make sure that all of the judging is completely fair because um you know my pageants aren't so much about outer beauty at all they're more about inner beauty okay okay very cool and so it, it doesn't matter how you know it's that solely on you know talent or swimsuits or right. or gowns it's more you know I, I would guess question and answers well not so much i mean um the swimsuit portion of a typical pageant i've eliminated out of my own pageant i just don't believe that women need to be you know, posing in swimsuits to be beautiful. Um, mine are more, mine are very original. They're not your typical. We, we have had the question and answer part. We've had, we've had essays. Um, there is a talent, but the talent portion's optional because I recognize that not everybody wants to get up and sing or wants to get up and dance. But ours is more about, you know, doing, you know, community service projects that are presented to the judges and doing, you know, uh, group routines that aren't judged that portion of the pageant works on like teamwork okay. and working as a group so there's there's a lot of like different you know I do like an international theme where the girls have to dress a lot like a woman of a different country and kind of represent that country so um, and then I, I did one a couple years ago where they had to be a woman in history and dress okay. up like her and um, you know say a couple facts about her life so it's you know there's I you know my pageant is one of with a twist so so instead of being a, a, a cookie cutter like all of them are right you, exactly. you, you want to go outside the box think a little bit differently and, and be able to you know bring people in by the originality of it right because you got to remember that pageants are supposed to be educational and women should be role models for other women and that's what this is all about you know making friends having a new experience and feeling good about yourself you know maybe if you're a person that doesn't have a lot of confidence you will after you compete in this particular pageant okay and oddly in a nice little segue just kind of worked out that way about other countries Mm -hmm. as you know or may not know uh the largest sport in the world is soccer easy enough you know i mean for the third world countries you have a ball a couple garbage cans or sticks or whatever for the goals well they take it a little bit serious in some Mm -hmm. countries um a soccer referee if people haven't heard i've been uh it was in brazil he, the, the, <laughs> trying to say this, he pissed off a lot of people. Aww. Uh, he got beheaded and quartered, mm. arms and legs oh, no. cut off. Uh, his head was placed on a stake. 
in the middle of the soccer field. Uh, the star Brazilian soccer player uh, was kicked out of the game and refused to leave the field. And an altercation happened, so he pulled out a, this is being the ref, pulled out a pocket knife, stabbed him several times, and he passed away on the way to the hospital. And let's see if I can't butcher this any worse than it is. Octavio Del Silvia Canadea Jordan. Uh, he, he was the he was the ref that well lost his head and hmm. got drawn and quartered. Um, what a horrible way to die! And people take the Browns' losses a little seriously, right. you know. And there, it's they just go crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's always a riot somewhere, you know. Fans are very passionate over, you know, in different countries for their soccer. That was <laughs> awesome. The line just went dead, but that's okay. Um, so it was one of those really, you know, bizarre stories, which, you know, it's late at night. You're not really paying attention and you're just kind of going through, you know, the different news stories and, you know, you stumble on that and you're like not really paying attention to it. And you're like, Hmm. Then um, another, uh, then you come back. Did I just read what I just read? <laughs> uh, there's some bogus uh, video of it going around of them putting them back together. I thought about playing. But I go, nah, that's just mm-hmm. too kind of phony looking. And I, kind of the same story. This this made national headlines. I forget the gentleman's name, uh, but he was a diehard Browns fan, Cleveland Browns fan. He passed away. His final request was to have members of the Cleveland Browns be pallbearers and lower him mm-hmm. into the ground because he wanted, you know, for the last time, the Browns to let him down. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> that made its way through a bunch of uh, different outlets. And, you know, I, that was another one. I just see Cleveland Browns and everything in this town has been so negative lately with everything going on with them and all the other things. Uh, I don't want to mm-hmm. hear that. Then I was just listening to the radio and I, I heard him like, huh, okay. <laughs> that that was a little different. I mean, and, you know, with all this stuff going on in, in, in town athletically, uh, you know, with, with the shows and all that, what, what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Yeah, when you're not on the movie set. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question because normally I'm working 24-7. But um, my favorite activity is karaoke. I love karaoke. And you know what that means in Japanese? No. Tone deaf. <laughs> I must be. I don't know. I'm a loud person, so maybe I am. So, okay. And so, uh, do you do it on, on set? A karaoke on set? Yeah. Well, I try to recruit all the other cast and crew members to go with me, but sometimes, you know, you get the ones that will do it, you know, and the other people, of course, that are too shy and they'll either just want to watch or, you know, they don't want to go at all, so. (laughs) And you just graduated from Ursuline. Yes, I did. Psychology? Psychology and business, yeah, mostly psychology, though, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have this real bad feeling after this show. I'm going to be your thesis for your master's. (laughs) Well, it's just, a good thing I'm not getting my master's in psychology. <laughs> oh, we'll be in business. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, on the on the way over, I yeah, uh, I saw that and I had a thought. You did psychology. Did you always want to be an actress? Yes, yes, I did. Now, in my strange little world, I can see the correlation between an actress and taking psychology because I've always heard interviews. You want to get into the role and right. understand the role. Is that what you had in mind or you're just fascinated with psychology? Well, up until I was about 18, I, I was definitely just going to be an actress. I never thought about college. I never thought I was smart enough to go to college. Um, but I did take a psychology class in high school, and I knew that that was always like going to be my second choice, like my backup. So um, I realized when I was 18 that I wanted to have a degree. Whether or not I ever used it, I felt like it would be a really good foundation. And, um, you know, so then I guess my love of wanting to become a psychologist, you know, okay. striving for that. But, you know, life, you know, Know, continues to change and my acting career has taken off so much more so I, I just don't think um, you know actually being a licensed psychologist would be something that's um, 
you know, in my direction okay. right now. Russell, you have a call. I have a call. Uh, hello. Who's on? E- Chauncey Cover. Oh, boy. Uh, for those who don't know, this is, uh, God, my old punter when I was coaching football, my, old, <laughs> my very first co-host. Chauncey Cover, uh, producer for Blue Bloods, stand-up comedian. Uh, you're writing a one-man show. You're terrorizing New York City. Did I leave anything out? No, you pretty much nailed it on the head. Yeah, I'm working for uh, two different networks now. Oh, what's the uh, second one you picked up? And, and I'll be doing a one-man show run here in New York starting August 3rd. Very cool. What's your second show you picked up? Uh, I can't say yet. It's not finalized. I should know early next week. Uh, but it is a show on a major network. Are you writing it or producing it? Uh, I will be producing. Uh, hopefully get close to the writer's room. We'll see. Okay, because I know you. Uh, last time I talked to you at some place we shall not name because they're not worthy of being named, um, you were uh, writing the show hoping to get that picked up uh well i'm in the middle of writing four different scripts right now uh one has interest by a major network so we'll see man it's uh the business is tough (laughs) so uh but you know i'm i'm out here and and getting things in the, the hands of the right people so and now we'll see yeah and and it's a lot of it's you know confidential stuff so Oh, I, I have an actress next to me. She's <laughs> agreeing. Now, seeing she's been in movies, something you, you haven't been in, we're going to get more into her, her stuff here in a little bit. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, it, it's... I, the, did a, I did a feature. Now, did you have your SAG card? No. And so you kind of sat in the background and waved. Is that correct? Uh, it's a non, it was a non-union film. Did you speak? Anyway... Did you, did you speak? <laughs> yes or no, did you speak? <laughs> Your mom speaks. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, and that's just how we... Sorry, I'm exhausted. I've like been in the office for like 13 hours already. What, that's What's about up? time you work. Let's go, let's talk, let's chat. Okay, now what's your one-man show about? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's based on my life. Uh-oh. And, you know, just funny observations. I mean, you, you, you've you seen me <laughs> in person. You know what I do. And I just kind of take that and translate it into uh, into a stage show. How screwed am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, without the show, I mean, you were screwed before you met me, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it should be funny. It, it'll be uh, an emotional roller coaster. Okay, where are you going to, you're going to be, I know you're going to be off, off. Off, 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 off Broadway. Yeah, standing up on some dumpster no, preaching a, to the it, homeless. It's not a Broadway <laughs> show. It's uh, it, it, I'll be starting at the Upright Citizens Brigade in Chelsea here in New York City. Okay, at least it's not. I had you envisioned doing one-liners on a dumpster and impressing you know the homeless, you know, making them really want to. Slip the wrist and just... That's what I'm doing now. No joke, I'm sitting next to a dumpster talking to you. <laughs> well, we, we started on the bottom, and, well, at least, at least I'm glad to know that you and I are still talking and we're still next to the garbage. Nothing really ever changes. When's the next time you're going to be in... Uh, no. In Seatown? I'll be there uh, for one night end of this month uh, real quick. But, yeah, uh, I've got to be back here. But I don't know. I don't know when I'll be there for an extended period of time. Let's put it that way. Okay, I got two questions, and I'll let you uh, go. For the guys, how hot is Bridget Moynihan? She's fantastic. Uh, absolutely stunning and really, uh, really great woman. And Yeah, that's, the, that's all I'll say about that. Okay. The I must, love working with her. The, the mustache. Mr. Selleck, what's it's it? glorious? A glorious, it's glorious, and in fact, uh, I, I'm growing a mustache right now uh, to compete with him, and my entire desk is littered with uh, mustaches. So it's kind of a joke around here in the office, but um, I don't think it'll ever be as magnificent as his soup strainer. <laughs> but 
it, it, it really is everything it looks like on screen in person. Does he have a, his own handler for the mustache? Something that comes out the little comb and just <laughs> you know, puts product on I'm it? I'm sure that's on the checklist of his assistant's daily, uh, daily routines. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know how he keeps it that nice. I mean, it is beautiful. I, mine, you know, I look like a 14-year-old Mexican boy. Well, when puberty hits, that would be one hell of a mustache. I'm, yeah, I'm still waiting for the old balls to drop. <laughs> yeah, keep waiting. My friend, thank you for calling in. I couldn't do my first show without you, know, without you calling in and harassing a little bit. Best of Absolutely, and hopefully once I get some free time, uh, which is limited, uh, that I'll be able to call in and actually do something fun. Yeah, your your rants and observations uh, are, are missed and, and wanted, and I think you know, the oh, new miss, fans here I miss will be being a part of it. No, I know it's we we had a lot of ignorant fun back in the day. So you you have a That's good one. It. We're just a couple of idiots. <laughs> oh yes. We got the dunce hats. I got to bring the dunce hat out. But I'll let you get going, my friend. Thank you for giving me a, a, a holla holla and, you know, be well in New York. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And good luck with the, with the show and everything. And hopefully we'll chat soon, my man. Have a good one. Stay out of New Jersey. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Uh, you know the difference between garbage and a girl from New Jersey. Oh, absolutely. We pick up trash here in New York. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Have a good one, my friend. All right, you guys. Have a great night. Talk All right, to you peace. Oh, bye. That's Chauncey Cover. Good old friend of mine and another lead-in uh, from a producer to an actress. Uh, we lost, what's about two weeks ago? James Gildolfini. About maybe a little longer. Yeah, um, and it just got released that uh, he left his estate, which was estimated about seventy million dollars, and he left it to his, I believe, his two-year-old daughter and his sister, where the baby mama fits in. Hmm? Mm. But <laughs> uh, the, the kid gets it and his sister gets it. But there's a thing, believe it or not, called a death tax. Oh, man. And he's losing, well, they're losing half. Oh, wow. They're estimated about $40 is going to the government. And, I mean, they'll get you coming. They're going to get mm. you going. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, I. there's always been that joke. I, I don't know if it's. Joke's the right word, but stars all die in threes. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it was just you know, one after another, and it stops, and it picks up again. And that was 51 years old, heart attack in Italy. And everything I read, he went peacefully and, and all that, and just waiting for all the Soprano shows to, to pop up. <laughs> yeah, I'd go peacefully, too, if I ate all that chicken and greasy foods. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm afraid it's, I mean... I work at a food distribution company, and we're in, I, you can feel free to put the joke in anywhere you want. Everybody does. I cut cheese, you know, imported cheese for a living. And I could, you know, only imagine <laughs> what my cholesterol level would be because it's just, you know, scraps are laying there and you're just eating <laughs> that. You're single, pizza, right. steaks. Yeah, so, you know, I know he had a smile on his face. Um and before Chance called, one of the questions I was asking, I was going to ask, was you have a publicist. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between a publicist and a manager? Good question. A publicist is something that works on more of your promotion, you know, just okay. making you known to the world and, you know, the advertisement, the marketing, kind of like how you brand yourself. You know, okay. when you're an actor... Um, and, and you establish, you know, a name, whether it be your real name or like a stage name, that's your brand, you know. So when people hear that name, whether it's like, you know, kind of small, like like me just being an independent film actress or whether you're an A-list actor, like people are going to recognize that name and they're going to be like, oh, you know, so-and-so. Now, a manager is somebody that... Um, 
you know, really holds your hand realistically and hopefully they would represent a low number of people. They should be, you know, submitting you for projects, recommending you, referring you, you know, also kind of doing some, you know, PR and promotion, but more, you know, just kind of guiding your career, like giving you advice like, oh, you know, you know, maybe you should take this type of role, maybe you shouldn't take this type of role, you know, just kind of being more of a mentor, more of a guide, because, you know, as an actor, it's a lot to juggle everything, you know, I've represented myself, um, I mean, I've had several agents on and off over the years, all over the United States, but I've, I've really, you know, really represented myself, really pushed myself for so many years, and now I've gotten to the point where people are, you know, they want to be connected to me, so, um, you know, it's just nice to have people that are really there to support you and really do career care about your career as if it is a part of their own. So if you have both a manager and a publicist, mm -hmm. do they work hand in hand? Sometimes they can, and they don't have to. You know, sometimes the manager will take on some of the publicist roles and vice versa. So, I mean, like mm -hmm. one has you booked for an interview on Friday and someone goes, well, yeah, she could do that on Friday and be double booked. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's, communication is really important. You need to let people know what you're doing and, you know, so that they can intervene. And, you know, we're, we got, ah, we could squeeze this in before before the break. I know I wanted to you know, get a little bit more into this after, after the break. Um, what is the one thing that most people don't know about the movie business how it how it gets shot how things get shot yeah how how the order in which everything gets you have a script mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily go go from the beginning to the end it, it's cut up in different aspects correct right. that is correct so how difficult is it to figure out what you're doing and i mean how do you prepare for your lines as an actor, how do I prepare for my lines? Yeah. Um, I have a very interesting way of, of doing that. Several steps. Obviously, you have to know your character, know the other characters, know the story really well. And, you you know, it, it's all pieces of one puzzle. And me personally, what I like to do is I like to, I, I you know, I'm a very verbatim type of person. I, I don't like improv too much. So... You know, I'm very by the book. I feel like the screenwriter wrote the script for a reason and you should stick with that story. So what I do is I like to memorize my lines verbatim, just, you know, rote memory just over and over until it's very repetitive. And then I really bring in the character and I bring in the feeling and I do it different ways. And I even memorize my lines as I work out because there's nothing I love more than killing two birds with one stone. So I'm just a multitasker. Yeah, I just, you know, you learn from, you know, the beginning of the script to the end of the script, but the movie's shot, you could be doing the end of the movie first. Mm -hmm. The beginning in the middle, and the middle somewhere somewhere else. And there's nothing more frustrating than a director that doesn't tell you what is being shot when. So, you know, a lot of times you don't know, so you memorize the entire script, and then... Or you memorize the beginning and then the end is being shot first. So there's been many times where I thought, okay, we're doing these scenes today. And then we end up doing other scenes that I didn't have prepared. So then I'm rushing. I have like an hour to prepare it. And I always make it work. You know, the other actors I work with are all amazing and super talented. But, um, you know, you just, you just learn to make it work. And if you can't be flexible, then this business is not for you. And I would say real quick, you got an opportunity to work with. Tommy Dreamer. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Tommy Dreamer was a former professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, worked uh, wrestled uh, Extreme Championship Wrestling, World Wrestling Entertainment, which was World Wrestling Federation, a couple other ones. How is he as an actor? Oh, he's super talented and he's super sweet. I just adore him. Um, he played uh, my husband in this one movie, and he's just very great to work with. Um, I just, you know, hold him in high regard, and I would love to work with him again. Because there have been a lot of professional wrestlers that tried to get into sure. movies, and a lot of them, you just sit back and go, <laughs> yeah, stick oh. to the mat, stick to the mat, my friend. But yeah, you know, he was, you know, always, you know, real charism charismatic. And yes, sure. just. I'm sure he had some stories, and I'm sure if you twapped him hard enough in the forehead, he'll, he'll cut himself open. <laughs> the man just loved to bleed. We're going to take our... our
break right now. We'll be back in just a few minutes. And we'll dump, uh, jump into some of your movies. Okay, great. Show some clips. And I got a lot of questions about how you choose your roles. All right. Thank so you, we'll Russell. So we'll be right back. Hang tight. This is all the Russell right. Reed Show. So me that weren't all that pretty. And with every touch, you fix them. Now you've been talking in your sleep. You're listening. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Call the show toll free. 1-888-668-0742. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network on MorningShowCentral.com. Lakewood Computer, located at 14035 Madison Avenue in Lakewood, has it all. If you're in need of computer repairs or want to cut the cost of ink cartridges and printing supplies, count on Lakewood Computer in Lakewood, Ohio to provide it all. For the past five years, Lakewood Computer has been providing you with a huge assortment of computer equipment and services at very competitive prices. Lakewood Computer purchases and sells pre-owned desktops, laptops, and related equipment. And they offer outstanding prices on aftermarket printing supplies, including toner cartridges and ink cartridges. With 29 years of professional experience, Lakewood Computer is highly confident in their ability to enhance your overall computing experience. Check them out online at Joe's lakewoodcomputer.com that's joe's lakewoodcomputer.com or give them a call toll free 855-580-0768 that's 855-580-0768 the following message is for those with a credit score of 800 and below who wouldn't want better credit did you ever wonder how different life would be from just having a higher credit score are you tired of being turned down for any kind of loan or only offered high interest rates because your credit score is holding you prisoner life doesn't have to be that way anymore with access to turn score by increasing your credit score only 50 to 100 points it can potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars in interest over just a five to ten year period it can be the difference in getting approved for a personal loan business loan high limits on credit cards a brand new car lease or even a home mortgage we see so many ads from companies that give us our credit score but once we get our credit score what are they going to do to actually repair your credit unfortunately nothing until now, TurnScore is the first automated credit repair platform that is simple, safe, and secure. You'll be empowered right from the comfort of your own computer so you can challenge and repair your credit report to ensure it's fair and accurate. TurnScore is specifically developed with you in mind. There's no more need for an attorney, credit repair companies, or credit counseling. More importantly, no more need for paying higher fees. TurnScore will help you get back on track and get the buying power you need. So whether you have bad credit, average credit, credit or even good credit turn score is helping turn lives around one credit score at a time go to turnscore.com and enter the promo code msc20 and get 20 bucks off your purchase that's t-u-r-n-s-c-o-r.com t-u-r-n-s-c-o-r.com turnscore.com looking for reliable and affordable shoutcast audio or video hosting jwn media offers complete shoutcast hosting solutions for business or personal use all plans come with full listener stats, custom web scripts for implementing your service into your existing website, full server control, super fast network, and huge bandwidth limits, a 99.5% uptime guarantee, and friendly, knowledgeable support personnel dedicated to making your hosting experience fun and easy. With plans starting at only $3 a month, you have no excuse not to get a server of your own. Plus, with the option to add auto DJ and on-demand services, you can be confident your station will be all it can be. Custom plans are also available at their website. Simply visit jwnmedia.com and click the Shoutcast hosting link to get started right now. Hey local bands and unsigned artists, what if I told you there was a place in Cleveland where you can get your merch made and have it sold in one location? What if I said you could bring your CDs and tickets to upcoming shows to this location? And what if I said you could do live acoustic sets at this location? I bet you're thinking there's no such place in Cleveland. Guess what? You'd be wrong. Contact Rick Navario at Rock City Cleveland and tell him you need merch made and you want to sell it in his store. Now, how cool is that? You can tell your fans to come down and get your stuff. And I think he'd ship your products to your fans. And he's local. Contact Rick Navario at Rock City Cleveland today. 216-622-0377. That's 216-622-0377. If you have a product or service, let people know about it. Get your message out there and advertise.
guys on MSC Radio Network. It's easier than you think, and the whole planet is listening. Find out how you can advertise. Email Chris at MorningShowCentral.com. Pete 99 Technologies. Affordable and reliable web hosting done right. Jumping from one web host to another can be frustrating. Finding a good web host can be unnerving for even the most experienced of web designers. That's why Uncensored Net Noise has chosen Pete 99 Technologies as its web hosting supplier. Established in 1999, Pete 99 Technologies has evolved into a first class web hosting provider. It's 99.9% uptime rivals many in the industry. That's why they offer their 30 day guarantee. No questions asked. For more information, go to P99.com. P99 Technologies will help you get started with your web presence with honest and expert customer service. P99 Technologies, affordable and reliable web hosting done right. If you're looking for the best in musical equipment, recording gear, sound reinforcement, and more, Guitar Center has you covered. Guitar Center, located at 26635 Brook Park Road in North Olmsted, has the tools of your trade. With the largest selection of music and sound gear in the area, they cater to your musical needs and have the knowledge to help you out. Guitar Center in North Olmsted. MorningShowCentral.com uses them. You should too. Need to know more? Go to GuitarCenter.com. With hundreds of live weather products, and layers and thousands of combinations. Weather Studio provides a professional graphics and storm monitoring solution without complex user knowledge and without the industry standard price tag of $1,000 plus broadcast systems. Weather Studio displays a plethora of critical atmospheric and geophysical data on an interactive GIS enabled computer map. Get your free 14 day trial of Weather Studio at their website, weatherstudio.paulmarv.com. That's weatherstudio.paulmarv.com. Calm. I know, I know, oh my god, I know what we're gonna do. Oh, it's so delicious, I can almost taste it. If you're looking for the best sub shop in town, look no further. Hanini Subs, located at 7310 Lorraine Avenue, is the place for you. Stop in for a cold cut sub, cheeseburger and fries, wing dings and fries, and so much more. You can almost taste it. Hanini Subs at 7310 Lorraine Avenue is open 24 hours a day. Check them out on Facebook, facebook.com slash burrito crazy. And if you mention MSC Radio Network, you'll get a dollar off your meal. It's all good at Hanini Subs. So damn good. User friendly and ready to serve. MorningShowCentral.com. Ask for money and get advice. Ask for advice, get money twice. I'm from the dirty, but that Chico nice. Y'all call it a moment. I call it life. One day, one Welcome back to the show. I am Russell Reed. With me is Alex Russo. Welcome to the debut of the Russell Reed Show here on the MSC Radio Network. If you got any questions for Alex, don't hesitate to give us a call. 888-668-0742. I want to congratulate Rochelle Freed winning a $50 gas card. Uh, thank you for being a loyal listener. She uh, correctly answered the stupid question of where our, what the original name of the show was. But back to my guest of the hour. <laughs> now, how many movies have you done? Um, I have just completed my 20th feature film. That 20. I That I actually had a part in, leader supporting, not just, you know, an extra. Now, I, when I was talking to Chauncey about this uh, Screen Actors Guild card, SAG, mm -hmm. um... So to be in a union film, you would need that. Um, yes and no. It just kind of depends. Um, I've auditioned for a lot of union films. I mean, I'm non-union right now, but I'm also SAG eligible. So if the right role were to come around that would require it, you know, I could uh, be tapped hardly or whatever, which would, you know, enable me to be in the film. Um, so I've, I've auditioned for a, a SAG roles. I've been up for several of them. You know, came really close, but... Okay. And, I'm, and you know, I'm kind of waiting for the right role because if you just join, you know, you have to pay all these fees, and if it's not worth it, that's, you know... That's what uh, Chance right. told me. It's so. not a cheap little no. license to get. <laughs> no. And if the roles aren't there... Right. You know, you're, you're just not really flushing the money down, but it, you're not getting what you want out right. of it. What was your very first movie? Um, my very first movie, I had like a kind of a small supporting role. It was called On the North Coast, which released um, in December of 2012. 
Well, 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 2012. Yes. So in about a year, you've done 20 movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did wow. a lot of I did a lot of pilots, commercials, other things prior to that because I've been acting since I was a kid. But yeah, as far as feature film, independent feature film, that was the first one. Okay, and now what's the difference between an independent film and I guess a a non independent film? Um, budget. <laughs> budget. That's all it is. I the, mean. Yeah, and the bigger films have the backing of the major studios and independent. Like anyone can make an independent film if they have a budget to make one. I mean, some people make films and don't have any budget at all, so it just okay. depends on your resources. <laughs> okay, and um, brain cramp right now. Um, I know what I want to want to ask. The film festivals. There's one in Toronto. I know there's one in Chicago and Sun Valley, and and I, that's just strictly for the small indie films. To be honest, I'm not sure. I always think I hear of bigger films getting in, but it, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm not really, I'm not real knowledgeable with film festivals. Okay. Just because I haven't submitted a film to a film festival. Okay. And one of the things uh, we'll get you back in at another time to you know, really get into this. Uh, tell us what you need. You have a film. Mm hmm. Uh, as I guess the language is, it's in the can. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, you're just looking to get it distributed, mm -hmm. distributed, sorry, and a producer and all that. Now, how does one who might be listening may want to help out? How do they help you? Well, right now, I actually just have the screenplay completed. Um, and, I, you know, I would love to, to make this movie, and I totally have the resources to do that. Um, I just don't have... A budget and I refuse to make the film without an established set budget because I believe that everybody should be paid you know I should be using the right equipment I should have you know locations that I can I feeding everyone putting everyone up I mean I just believe in in, in that heavily um, because when, when if I you know what's the point of making a film if it's not gonna go anywhere okay I mean you know doesn't have to be in the movie theater but I want it to go somewhere so you know I definitely believe in, 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 you know, doing things the right way. And okay. even if I have to wait several years to make that happen, then that's just what it's going to take. And one of the things I found interesting is a lot of movies that are made were made two, three, four years ago, and they were waiting for a distributor or something. Then when they finally get it, it gets released. Right. Because, you know, you could get a star that they're giving a shot to, and all of a sudden, they may wait, and all of a sudden, like a Matthew McConaughey kind of thing, that all of a sudden he's huge. Now it's a good time to release it, and it was done, you know, not mm, within right. the last couple months, but it could have been a couple years ago. Um, now with the stuff that you do, you uh, where can people watch that? Russell, real quick, Chauncey in the chat wants to know where, what kind of uh, screenplay is it? Yeah, what kind of uh, what, what did you write? What kind of um, it, it would be approximately 90 minutes in length because it's about 89 to 90 pages long. And it, it's categorized as a psychological thriller. Um, it's based on a true story that happened back in 2007. And the title of the film is called The Trickster. Okay. Um, not sure how much you want to know about it, but um, the plot, is, the theme is basically, you know, uh, childhood trauma that manifests into adulthood. So there's a lot, all the characters are intertwined, and it's very entertaining. There's a lot of comical undertones in it, so it's not all serious. It's a lot of funny parts in it. And I think it's a great story because it's, it's nothing that I've ever seen before. It's nothing I've ever heard of before. So, it, you know, there's definitely a good twist at the end. Okay, and how much of that thought process came from your psychology classes? Uh, probably a lot. I, <laughs> there's nothing I love more than combining my degree with like my acting career because there's just so much you learn studying psychology that can be applied to everyday life, and okay. it's um, you know great to pull different things and, and create something that's you know okay. really entertaining. And we'll we'll do our first clip, and it's Monaga Hala. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a little little brief story on Monaga Hala. And why that name? I mean, why can't you just call it maybe the Allegheny? But you, you guys chose the Monagahela, which is a mouthful. <laughs> um, yeah, that movie I got cast in back in the fall of 2011. We shot um, in the spring of 2012. 
And um, it was filmed in Pittsburgh, so I actually had to submit a video audition. I never auditioned in person, and I got the role out of 132 other girls. Very cool. And um, I went. I lived in Pittsburgh for two months. You know, shot I'm this sorry. film. I'm I loved it. I really loved Pittsburgh a lot, and it was. I think it was one of the best sets that I've ever been on. Absolutely an unforgettable experience. You know, very professional. And it's it's something that I'm very proud of and very thankful to be a part of it. Okay, let's check it out right now. It's you know, first time doing this. Let's hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it's learning everything new. We're cryptos. Cryptozoologists. What brings the two of you to Pittsburgh? There's something in the river. And there's also been a lot of sightings and injuries too. The hell could have done this in the river? Guys, rest assured, we will catch whatever it is swimming around in your river. What, what? What is going on? Does this have anything to do with your friends from London? They're researchers, and we've been chasing whatever this thing is for days. You have no idea who these people are, do you? I am sure if there is something in that river, it was put there to create a hoax. We're running around with a bunch of con artists. Man. The creature in that water is very real. People get into the water, they're going to be hurt. If you don't do something, you're going to be pulling bodies out of this river. Very cool. <laughs> And how long did that take to, uh, to shoot? Two months. Two months? Mm -hmm. uh, let me get this so people can actually see us. Uh, I got it? Okay. Like I said, first show, working out the, the kinks. <laughs> uh, about two months, and uh, I have family from the Pittsburgh area. Mm -hmm. And when, when did you actually shoot that, uh, seasonal-wise? Um, it was March and March and April of 2012. Yeah, so, so it's they, a little cold. Yeah, You're they made you fake, make, make you fake it being warm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I noticed when they jumped, uh, the one guy jumped in. He he had a wetsuit on because. Yeah, and I was in a wetsuit too in the water, and it was and three in the morning, um, and it was very cold, coldest I've ever been, I think. <laughs> no, and you said it was three o'clock in the morning. Yes. Was that? It, this is a weird question. Was it? A night scene or a day scene? It was a night scene. Okay, because I know uh, when they did Thor here a couple years ago for the night scenes, he just brought a big uh, boom cranes with the lights to make the middle of the night in the middle of the afternoon just so they wouldn't tie up traffic oh, and, wow. and stuff like that. So, I mean, when so hair and makeup for a 3 a.m. call, what time did you show up for that? Midnight? For hair and makeup? Yeah. Oh no, like four o'clock in the afternoon. We, I think we normally started. To, I mean, we, you know, we had earlier shoes. We normally start. I think three or four o'clock in the afternoon would be like hair and makeup. You know, we'd be rolling maybe by five or six, and probably a lot of times film to like five, six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I was just didn't think so. You would just be in makeup and hair, and hoping there'd be no wind, no rain, not to ruin anything for all the work they yeah, did. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got to be in holding, you know, so we were we were inside, you know, when we okay. weren't shooting, so that was nice. Uh, what was your favorite shoot? You just got done doing, what, and I, I messed with you a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, the ding, 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 <laughs> the little redneck, uh, moon. Moonshine Kingdom, moonshine yeah. Moonshine Kingdom, what, what, I mean, I could ask a dumb question. Oh, what's that about? <laughs> Uh, where was that shot at? Um, that was shot in Huntsburg, Ohio. Huntsburg? Mm -hmm. And briefly, what was that about? Um, basically about a redneck who makes moonshine for a living, paid to make it. Um, and I play his uh, redneck girlfriend. <laughs> redneck girlfriend. Yeah. And it was, how long was that? A couple weeks? Yeah, that, um, that was shot over. Two weeks, yes. Two weeks, mm -hmm. and there we go. <laughs> yeah, and you posted a picture of one of your co-stars who had yellow teeth. Was that makeup for the movie, or did he just have yellow teeth? 
teeth. Uh, that was makeup. Okay, because yeah. you got Raz bad on that. Yeah. And and down in Huntsville, it had a West Virginia feel to it. Was it supposed to be based in, in West Virginia? Um, I'm not sure where it was based. Maybe just Huntsburg. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't. I don't know if that was specified in the script. I don't think okay, it was. Okay. And how, how do you choose your roles? Um. Well, I really have to trust the filmmaker, you know. I mean, at least do my research if I don't know them personally. Um, but, you know, I go for, I like very challenging roles. I like the role that none of the other girls want. Um, I, I, I like a challenge. I always want to play someone different. I, I, I've never been typecast. I don't ever want to be typecast. I want to play every type of role that I possibly could. Okay. So everything I see as a challenge, I see as an opportunity to grow and to learn something and to experience another part of life that I've never experienced before. You know, for Moonshine Kingdom, I had to have a, you know, a country girl accent. So it was, it was very nice to develop that and, and you know, to work on that and dialect. And to, to get there, you just listen to a lot of Southern draws and just kind of pick Pick, pick one up, and, yeah, pick up things here and there. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, as a woman actress, yes, uh, a lot of roles these days they want actresses without clothing on. Mm-hmm. How many of those have come your way that you've turned down? Because it would you a would you do something like that, or if it was what's the word they say script approved, meaning it had context, right? Instead of just you know, uh, God, uh, J, was it J.J. J. Abrams that did the Star Trek, the new, the newest one? He he apologized because he had one of the actresses, you know, and uh, seeing that he said she didn't need to be, and it was just you know, an underwear scene. He goes, it really had nothing to do nothing with, to do story, with anything. Yeah. It was just you know, he, and he apologized for it. Not many act, uh, not many directors would do that. Or right. now. Would it be a director's call? Would it be a producer's call? Or would it be a writer's call? I mean, how does something like that, you know, is it in the script or do they just come up and have a brain a brain idea? Oh, let's do it this way. I mean, how would... Um, it, it, you know, it, it depends and it varies per situation. I think most of the time they do it because that's what sells, especially on an independent level where you might not have established actors in your film or, or name actors rather. Um, you know, or, you know, with a lot of scripts too, it, it makes sense. It's imperative to the story. And it, in a lot of cases, it's beautiful. I mean, it's something that's, you know, it just adds so much to yeah. the story, you know, so, but, it, it, but you know, you're right. There's a lot of people that just want to just, just to have it, just to have it. And like you said, just to sell the just movie to sell it. Mm-hmm. and those, you just automatically just know. Not that, no. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm very selective. It, it, there has to be certain conditions lined up for sure, and you know, I'm, I'm very picky. You know, it can only be certain angles, certain. Th- I mean, you can't, can't. I would never pose, you know, fully nude or anything like that. Um, it just, it just depends. On Do you find it degrading? Um, again, if it's just to have it in there, yeah. And is it just to have it in there? What? And by saying no to them, Mm -hmm. in your mind, would that cost you roles in the future? It depends. Um, You know, I I don't know what could happen in the future, but I've heard both sides of that story from actresses who did and actresses who didn't. Some people, it made them famous. Some people, it cost them their career. So it just, it depends on the situation, you know, and it also depends on how aggressive you are and, you know, what what the movie looks like and and different factors, you know? Yeah, because I know um, back in the beginning of her career, Ashley Judd, you know, would drop clothes in a heartbeat for a movie. As she got older, she was a little bit more picky. Then there came a time this past uh, year, she was thinking about running for, I believe, the Senate. Um, uh, for for Kentucky, then she backed out, and I'm I've said you know she has a good political mind, but because of everything she did in her past, will that come back and turn people off? You know, so it just you know I don't know if it was good for the movies, bad for the movies, but you know earlier in her career she just always and she still kind of does, but I mean you don't really know what you want to do down the road. Yeah, so I, I think it would be, like you said, kind of 
a decision at the it's time. Decision oriented, yeah. And I feel like if you're so strict, you're not going to get any roles. You know, I'm not, you know, saying be all out there, but you you just can't be so closed minded. Like I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Especially if you're nobody. You know what I mean? So. And the next one, uh, the Demon Odyssey, showing your range. And I remember talking to you. Who the hell are you on this one? <laughs> I look like the, I can't find you. Then after you explained it, I mean, you like I said, you do uh, morph into you know, characters oh, that yeah. Uh, yeah, you I do. don't really you know, know it's you. What, what's the demon odyssey about? Vampires, humans, and demons. Um, luckily, I play human. <laughs> but basically, I'm pregnant with the first ever half-human, half-vampire baby. And different uh, evil cults are after it for different reasons. So, um, so you beat Blade, who was the first half vampire, half human, and whatever that thing's name was in that Twilight movie that had a half vampire. I know the name. I just irritating my nieces by not giving it to her. <laughs> just check out this scene okay. from Demon Odyssey. I am Proteus. The name is Greek, ancient Greek. I'm a buyer and seller of things. Things much more valuable than books. Tell your soul to quit kicking in there. I don't want any damaged goods. We're gonna have a baby. <gasps> what did you say? We're gonna have a baby. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a miracle. I can't wait to text everybody. Are you really telling everyone about the most important event in our lives via a mass text? So, we have some news to tell you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. You all creatures know how this works. Nothing comes free. Not even the birds in the sky. You want something worth a, a thousand of these souls? Four hundred jars of blood? Half human. Half vampire. Baby. We need help protecting the baby. Other people, evil things, want this child for their own terrible means. I am someone unfamiliar with the art of protecting the unholy. In fact, far better versed in the art of destroying the unnatural. I know how they think. I know how they work. Nothing gets by me. Not one evil demon or crying ghost. I shot it. I stabbed it. Nothing. I really need this baby. Dead, alive, it doesn't matter to me. Forget that you hate me and help me. Was it the one I thought? <laughs> uh, it was the one, the slasher one? Oh man, there's been a couple of those. Was it the Bachelorette slasher one, or the um, the one with all the models? The one with all the models. And Candyland, yeah. Yeah, that's, Candyland. Um, that's premiering in September, actually. So that's well, right around the corner. Where's that going to be premiering at? Um, I, I, Atlas Cinemas, I believe, is is the place currently. Okay. Um, I, that's where, yeah, that's where they're having it, yeah. And, and I don't have a lot of details yet, um, but I, you know, it should be posted and, you know, later this month, I think. Yeah, uh, feel free to, we'll, we'll bring you back and okay. we'll, we'll do a little premiere of it and sure, get people to show up and have, have, have some fun. Oh, so yeah. be Atlas Theaters in the, in the area or just wide in the area I don't, like I said I don't have an address or anything yet um, or even a time but but that's what I when I you know found out so. very cool I want to thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule I know how busy it is uh, what do you have coming up 
Any, um, any right new now, roles? I'm trying to take a little break from acting, um, just to kind of you know recollect my the other things going on in my life. Um, but I've had three other offers for this fall for movies, so I'm I'm kind of talking to people right now, negotiating and seeing what I want to do, what I don't want to do. You know, I'm trying to work in other states. So there's definitely a lot going on. I, there's a lot going on five movies so far this year and I kind of just at least need a couple week break <laughs> exactly again thank you very much my dear uh, for coming on my thank first show thank you for show. having me uh, great can't wait to get you back and you know, let me know when when that Candyland uh, premieres I will and for sure we'll, we'll do something special for you okay thank you All so right, thank much you. Russell uh, this has been the Russell Reed Show see you next Thursday you guys be good take care uh, like me and follow me on Facebook and Twitter the Russell Reed Show and until next week, America, talk to you soon. Bye.